Hello, I'm Liang from Caltech. I'm the speaker for the next week's sem number theory seminar to Fuels Institute. This is a proper talk for the seminar. Uh, in this talk, I will provide you some preliminary introduction to what I will speak next Wednesday. Uh, basically, they are about some holomorphic conjectures of uh, L functions and um, um, a variant of also of trace formula called the Jackie Zagel trace formula, which is a very powerful toolkit to tag these holomorphic conjectures, and um, hopefully they are interesting to you. So this is the arrangement for this um, for this talk. Um, we will start with some basic L functions from from perspectives of algebra and an, an analysis. By analysis, I mean like uh, representations. Um, I, we then will introduce some holomorphic holomorphic conjectures on these L functions. And we will introduce some known results, then state our main theorem. And uh, I, then we'll introduce some ideas to ideas of the proof. As a very important toolkit, we'll introduce the Jackie Zagiachi's formula. Um, the simplest case is on GR2. So that's, that's one of the main topics for this talk. And um, we'll briefly um, introduce, we'll briefly discuss the hell run case as well. Uh, but, but the hell run case would be the main topic for the next week's uh, number theory seminar. So uh, let's start. Let's start with basic zeta functions. Uh, the first is your favorite Riemann zeta function. It's defined like by local product or Dirichlet series converging absolutely in some red half plane and uh, the meta memory continuation with the pole at s equal to one, which is simple. Uh, that's the most famous zeta function. Also, you have other zeta, other zeta functions for or error functions in general. Uh, like um, if you are given a much holomorphic Casper form, uh, for example, with um, with level one, and if this form is furthermore primitive, then it will then it will be attached to a, a error function. This error function is simply defined by taking the Dirichlet coefficient to be the Fourier coefficient of f, and it's actually an automorphic. It's actually called automorphic error function. It has the property that uh, it's analytic. It admits an analytic continuation to the whole complex plane. It has some sort of functional equation just as the Riemann zeta function. And also you can form the ranking sub convolution of, of this kind of um, error function or module forms. It's uh, basically, uh, in this case, just to take the modulus of the coefficient as squared and as the Dirichlet coefficient, and roughly speaking, this is um, this can be re-given by a Pearson product of this module squared with an Eisenstein series. Uh, here, the approximate simple means uh, while well, this on the left hand side, on the left hand side is just a finite part of the L function, while the the right hand side will give you the complete L function which also includes the Archimedean information. Um, you can also define our functions um, over a number field. Here's a counter, counterpart of Riemann zeta. I mean, the Datkin zeta function. It defines quite similar as the Riemann zeta, especially um, except for you replace the rational problems by prime ideas. And it has a similar uh, Dirichlet coefficient or Dirichlet series representation. And uh, if the base field is Q, the rationals, you can lift the module form to a Caspidor representation of DR2 over the Adels. And um, um, you can define a representation, uh, an error function with respect to this Caspidor representation to show that. Eventually, these two L functions are the same, but, but you know, for general, but you know, for general number field, there is no concept of module forms. Uh, but we do have the definition of Casper representations of this uh, group scheme over this uh, uh, over this field. So we can consider consider pi as a Casper representation, and uh, toward this object pi, 
you can still define the so-called principal uh, principal functions for pi. It's given by an integral representation of J Gardman and JK. And uh, these error functions are quite similar as, uh, as the previous RSF. It admits an entire continuation and a functional equation and something like that. And similarly, you can form the ranking suburb convolution of this um, um, cuspid representations, uh, essentially by the piston product of assistance series and the modular squalor. Or, or the general ranking sub theory tells you that this error function could be given essentially by an integral uh, of this form. Or this is not quite strict because in general, this would be a finite sum of uh, integral of this form. But uh, for simplicity, uh, we, I write things like this, but you know the idea. And also there are some other types of L functions called uh, like uh, uh, RTR functions to find for finite dimensional reducible complex representations of the Galois group. And um, they admit uh, meromorphic continuations, but it's a big conjecture that um, RTR RDR functions are holomorphic for, uh, for those kind of non-trivial reducible representations. And also for varieties, you can define the so-called high cell way R functions. Also, there are many other types of R function like motivic R function as well. And for these interesting R functions, we have some expectations like um, we, assume, we expect these L functions admit um, um, holomorphic continuation or at least a meromorphic continuation with some easily described uh, poles or simple poles. And there are finite many such poles and they have some functional equation of the form like this. Uh, this is a normalized form of the functional equation. And um, uh, there are many other hypotheses, many other assumptions like uh, Riemann hypothesis or even uh, Ziegler zeros. But, but in this talk, we are focused on the holomorphic continuation of these L functions. So uh, we will discuss basically in this talk two uh, main kinds of uh, simple L functions. The first is from the algebraic side. It's your favorite dead gain Z function. And the other is from analytic side from the, like uh, from modular forms, the ranking sub convolution of two modular forms. Uh, they have the property that um, say both have simple pole at S equal to one since the Riemann zeta function has a simple pole at, at S equal to one. Uh, so if we consider the ratio of those L functions from algebraic side and then analytic side, we can study the analytic properties of this ratio, at least at S, S, at, uh, S equal to one. And apparently uh, they are holomorphic at uh, this po single point. And uh, you, may, you may wonder why do we, why do we look at this um, ratio and why do we add, look at this single point as equal to one? And um, why are we interested in this? So first, um, I'll tell you some properties of this, um, of this uh, ratios. You know, they are, they are regular at S equal to one, this point. But, um, but in fact, uh, the analy analytic structure of these ratios are quite rigid. By that I mean, uh, they are actually holomorphic at every point on the complex plane. This is simple on the algebraic side because the ratio is simply uh, the judicial the function attached to the quadratic character eta k. This eta k is a character to, um, attached to this field extension. And, and things would be dramatically difficult from the analytic side. It's a theorem of uh, Shimura and Zagia in the 1970s um, saying that the, this ratio from analytic side is holomorphic as well. So why are we interested in them? It, historically, uh, there are some reasons. First, Dadkin was interested in it 
And in fact, to make the following conjecture, for any number of fields, uh, this, this ratio should admit an analytic continuation to the whole complex plane. And we've already seen this for, uh, for quadratic extensions, right? That he himself proved this, this conjecture for a pure cubic field. And nowadays we know if the field extension is Galois or, or solvable, and then that conjecture holds. And it actually holds also for uh, general, general extension, I mean, relative extensions. And Murphy proved the twisted case. Uh, he also remarked, as a corollary of, uh, of these results, that conjecture will hold for any degree extension, uh, any field extension with degree less or equal to four, because in that case, K is contained in the solvable extension. So that thing was one of the examples who are interested in, in that conjecture, who are interested in that ratio, and if there are any other or any further motivation? Uh, I think yes. Hartin was interested in that in his conjecture. To solve that conjecture, he made some um, effort. For example, T together with Takaki proved the decomposition of the ratio in terms of some other error function. These error functions are the so-called Hartin error functions we just mentioned in our second slides, right? And um, that can conjecture claims that this ratio admits a holomorphic continuation. So Artin, based on this um, decomposition, conjectured the following, that each factor here admits um, a holomorphic continuation to the whole complex plane. If so, this is a statement of Artin's conjecture of any non-trivial finite dimensional reducible complex representation of the Galois group. The Artin function is entire. And this is known for monomial Galois representations and some two-dimensional cases, for example, like a, a tetrahedral case or octahedral case. The way he proved this for number field, but Artin's conjecture is wide open for number field. So as young Young mathematicians, you may wonder if there are any hope or any strategy to attack Hardin conjecture. Uh, yes, today I'll in, yes I'll introduce you uh, one of the one of my favorite strategy. It's called Longlands philosophy, where um, Longlands was interested in Hardin's conjecture and to solve Hardin conjecture, he proposed this philosophy, and according to Longlands. Each Artin R function should be an automorphic R function. By automorphic R function, we just mean the R function from uh, attached to some automorphic representation. For example, the R function attached to a module forms. And this kind of uh, automorphic R function in, is um, typically easier to prove to prove um, being analytic. And um, on the other hand, where I see long lines philosophy where it indicates directly that uh, this analytic, analytic ratio uh, I, is entire. So what is long lines philosophy? To introduce long lines philosophy, let's first um, talk about long lines correspondence. Um, for long lines correspondence, let's, let's consider a reductive group, for example, GL2, if you want. And the L group um, of G, where in the, in the case of GL2, the L group is just a GL2 of C. And let A of G be the set of automorphic representations on G AF, where AF is the ideal ring of F. And we, we can think this, um, this site as a subspace of the L2 functions on the idyllic quotient, on the automorphic quotient. Uh, there, are, there are some sort of generalization of module forms. And uh, given a automorphic representation on G, on G, like a GL2, if this pi is caspidal, we can define the standard uh, L functions attached to this pi or the principal L functions given by Goldman and Jacquet. Um, on our first slides, 
maybe second. And um, uh, globally, there's a conjecture weighting group over, over F. Or this is a hypothetical group, but um, the, its uh, local its local analog is a we group. And um, uh, Longlands conjectured that there's a there's a map from the set of automorphic representations to the set of weighted representations, and uh, we call this this row a parameter. Where this makes sense locally. For globally, it's a conjecture. Um, I mean, this WF is, is a hypothetical. But for GO and also for GRN, this correspondence is actually a bijection. It's one to one. In this talk, we are focused on GRN, especially GR2. And moreover, um, under this correspondence or under this bijection map, the R function to find, to find for this um, uh, this color representation is the same as the R function associated to the to the automorphic representation, which maps to this row. So um, since we we can show that the um, R function attached to this highest holomorphic, then you will see immediately adding adding conjecture follows from Lorentz correspondence. So assuming Langlands correspondence, we can talk about Langlands functionality conjecture, which is that given any, given any automobile representation pi on T, then by Langlands correspondence, there's a parameter or Galois representation of the weighting group to the uh, L group. And if there's a homomorphism from, from the L group to GRM, a representation or a finite or a finite dimensional representation of the L group R, we then can consider the composition of R and then little phi and denoted by capital phi. This capital phi will give you another parameter, namely the Galois representation of the weighting group. So using uh Langlands correspondence correspondence again, because this is um this is the parameter for GRN. It's a, a bijection. So there's a unique automorphic representation on GRN corresponding to this parameter. And uh, we define the long lens error function associated to this uh, R, associated to this homomorphism R to be the automorphic error function attached to this capital, capital pi. Um, this is a bit abstract, so I will give you a concrete example. This example is, um, is on GRN, and you know GRN acts on the algebra of, of SLN by conjugation. This will introduce an adjoint representation of GRN of C, and you will, you will view GRN of C as the dual group of, um, of GRN. So you will get a L homomorphism between the L group of GRN to GRN squared minus one. And uh, by the definition of long lens L function associated, long lens L function of this uh, adjoint uh, homomorphism, you will see precisely this adjoint L function is the analytic ratio we studied before. So long lens functionality together with long lens correspondence were imply that uh, um, this ratio is uh, holomorphic. So here's a summary, um, basically saying that the long lens implies everything. This is a uh, long lens correspondence, and this is uh, from um, Atin Takagi decomposition, and uh, this is from long lens punctuality. So, um, according to Langlands philosophy, we can expect the following conjecture that for any caspid representation on GRN, uh, the adjoint L function or the analytic ratio is holomorphic. This is included in Sarbrook's book, so let's call it Sarbrook's uh, conjecture. It's, it's, actually, it's actually a special case of Sarbrook's principle 
which we are talking the next week in the seminar. So uh, this conjecture should be a, a very basic result of Langlands philosophy. And if you are a big fan of Langlands, this should be interesting to you. And uh, it was not known since 1975 for hell run case. For example, when n is greater than two and pi is a general representation, general cuspid representation on GRN, it was not known. It's open. And recall Artin's conjecture, we have the decomposition uh, writing the quotient as a finite product of the Artin error functions here. And then Artin made a conjecture, conjecture that each error function admits an entire holomorphic continuation to the complex plane. And also, um, long, according to Langlands, one expects that we have a similar decomposition of the analytic quotient as a finite product of automorphic, automorphic functions attached to some cuspid representations. And uh, we do know each factor is holomorphic. But the problem is that we do not know if there's a, if this decomposition exists or not. So briefly speaking, on the algebraic side, we know that there is we know there is a decomposition, but we do not know each analytic, we do not know analytic properties of each factor. Where on the analytic side, we don't know if there's a decomposition, but we do know each factor ad admits a holomorphic continuation to the whole complex plane. So since it's quite uh, like uh, unbalanced, um, whereas that makes the conjecture makes that this problem quite interesting. And now let's talk about the known case. I mean, a dual two case. As we mentioned before, Shimura and Zaki are proved, proved independently that the edge on their function is holomorphic for dual two. So they did this for, class, for classical forms. And then Shimura's method was generalized to number field by the Albert and the Jackie in 1978. Um, later, Jackie and Zagia generalized the Zagia's original proof to number field in, in the setting of automorphic representations. And this proof um, is based on a trace formula, a variant of trace formula, which we will introduce later. And Flickr, um, years later, proved the partial result on GRN by a simple trace formula. But, but this cannot imply, um, imply a single form, single properties for each um, an individual uh, edge on functions. It's just a family properties. Okay, here's a brief summary. So um, on the algebraic side and the analytic side, we have two, um, two environment. One is the degree of the field extension, the other is the range of the general linear group, which we call, which we denote by n. And this table suggests that there's, there's some, uh, similar, there's some similar properties of the degree and the rank. And we have the two ratios. Algebraically, algebraic side, we have the ratio of, of dynamic and zeta functions. Analytic side, we have the adjoint R functions. So correspondingly, we have the data conjecture and the several conjecture. Um, GR2, the algebraic side is simple. And um, in degree two, the, the, the algebraic side is simple. And we already know in GR degrees three and degree four case because they are solvable. For a degree case, there's no idea. And the general problem is Artin's conjecture. Where on the analytic side, the GL2 case is a theorem of Shmur and Zagia, but the GL3 and GL4 was not known. Um, for hell run case, it's wide open. And gen generally, we can expect Langlands conjecture. So what we did here is, um, is prove the GL3 and GL4 case. Namely, here's our main theorem. So let F be a global field. You can think F is uh, like, um, um, like a Q 
and the chi on either class character on the ideals of f, you can think chi is trivial. And pi has been the representation of Dioran, and um, ls at is the adjoint error function, I mean the analytic ratio. But n is less or equal to four, we can we can show that the complete error function is entire. Um, where this, of course, imply the finite error function is entire as well. So roughly speaking, we can show several conjecture holds for any cascade representations when n is less or equal to four. That's our main result. The idea, um, the idea of the proof is falling. We have this diagram showing that uh, long lens implies everything. Where on this part, on the dating conjecture part, we know it holds a, it holds four degree and less or equal to four. And uh, since the degree are expected to correspond to like um, the rank, so we have a we have the natural expectation that the adjoint error function is entire for rank less or equal to four. Since over number field, um, the Artin conjecture and Longlands philosophy are beyond end scope for the moment. So we can only expect from lower, lower lines. So a naive conject, a naive idea would be the following. To make uh, the diagram commutative, and the implication is our main toolkit called Jackie trace formula. So let's briefly recall what is a trace formula. So um, let's keep, let's consider a smooth function on your two compactors spotted modular the center and it's by k invariant by, by k finite and it's transformed by the by some character and in the center. So we can define the kernel function which is actually a finite sum because um, f is discrete in this um, AF and the phi is compact supported. In, um, according to Longman's Eisenstein series, there's a spectral decomposition for the kernel function um, of, the, of the following form, where k naught is the contribution from caspido spectrum. It has a further decomposition like this, like, like a discrete sum of uh, uh, some automorphic forms. Since, since our test function is by k finite, um, this is actually a finite sum. And k infinity indicates the contribution from non caspital spectrum, namely the contribution from residual spectrum and then continuous spectrum. So the trace formula, which is, um, which are the trace of, a, uh, of an operator, uh, can be computed in two ways. The definition of trace is this. It can be computed in two ways. One way is just the plug, plugging the initial definition of the kernel and we call it the geometric side. The other way is to uh, substituting the spectral decomposition into this uh, definition and we call it the spectral side. Unfortunately, um, typically this, this, this integral will blow up. It does not converge at all for GR2. So technically we need some truncation, like Arthur's truncation. But, uh, but instead we can consider the following. Note that the, the contribution from caspital data, caspital spectrum decays rapidly, and um, the assistance series is increasing slowly. So um, this integral is well defined. And um, this, this, and computing this, this integral is called uh, the trace formula of Jackie Zagia's type, because K naught has another, um, another expression. K naught is the is the difference of the whole kernel, and the the and the contribution from non caspid part. So let's consider the left hand side first. Recall that we have the integral representation for the um, for the rankings of for the rankings of a convolution. It's basically a finite linear combination of the integral representation here, and plug plug the spectral decomposition of K naught. We will get the left hand side to be expressed as a 
linear combination of uh, the adjoint uh, of the ranking sub L functions. And similarly, we can and we can consider and then we consider right hand side. This is the definition of the right hand side. Um, since this is a geometrically defined, we can consider conjugacy classes. And um, for this part, we can store spectral decompositions or spectral expansions of this kernel function. And we then uh, use we then use free analysis and partial summation to handle um, handle this part. And eventually we get the upshot. The left hand side, which is the linear combination of um, L functions, and the right hand side would be after after all these manipulations would be of this form, uh, where this part comes from the elliptic regular, the elliptic regular object integrals of the geometric part, but some but other types of object integrals will diverge unfortunately. Also, the contribution from second part of were diverge as well as well. However, uh, if you combine these two singular of integrals, you will see um, the difference will be convergent and it will admit a metamorphic continuation to the whole complex plane. So if you divide it by zeta and uh, with a further refined manip manipulation, you will get a expression of this form. On the left hand side, it will be a, it will be a sum of uh, um, adjoint L functions. And typically this sum is the infinite sum. On the right hand side, the elliptic regular part will give you a finite sum of uh, Dirichlet L functions. This is a finite sum, uh, depending on the support of the test function. And um, we have two more terms. The first term is the infinite sum of many transforms of ranking sub functions and needed the meta metamorphic continuation. And the second sum is the finite sum of the turning operators. It's also metamorphic. And we then study the poles of this um, on the right hand side. And the possible poles are just a like half and one. There's just the two possible poles. And um, of course, we need to verify the convergence. Uh, which could be problematic. After that, uh, we will do spectral analysis on the left hand side to isolate an individual adjoint L function from the infinitely many uh, by verifying test functions. So we will get eventually the holomorphy of uh, adjoint L functions in this uh, uh, right half plane. Then we will apply functional equation. Uh, this function equation is, is uh, with respect to the Eisenstein series so that we can get the analytic continuation of adjoint L function to the whole complex plane to then we recover Draghi-Zagia's result, uh, namely the adjoint L function is the entire. Um, there are many subtle technical issues. For example, this is uh, infinite sound, convergence is problematic. So if you want to generalize this this approach to hell rank case it's um, quite involved and there are many other weird terms showing up uh, we will talk about that in next wednesday i think that's that's all what i want to talk in this private talk thank you for your attention thanks